Hey everyone! So what I've got for you today is the first of a deep dive into the six principles that I use to uh, undertake agile organizational transformation. Uh, as promised, so we did a little intro video last week where I laid out uh, all of the, the six principles at the high level and then I promised you that I was going to deep dive into each and give you some examples along the way. So this episode is all about principle number one, which is look outside in from a customer's perspective. So when you start down this journey of transformation, um, organizational transformation, uh, agile org transformation, uh, whatever you want to call it, you're, you're going to bump into a whole bunch of different methods, a whole bunch of different frameworks. Uh, you're going to find a whole bunch of really opinionated people on the topic. Uh, and the stuff is messy and it's tricky and, uh, you know, there's... I, th I think there's this, there's this desire to hold on to examples that have worked really well, right? But we've already had this discussion about uh, part of the reason why I teach principles is because when we're talking about all transformation, what we're talking about is a shift in your mindset to start to design from first principles. So we need to get away from this mentality of, hey, it's worked really well over there for Amazon, Google, you know, insert um, aspirational company. <laughs> it's worked really well for them. Therefore, if I do exactly what they did and I, and I take that and I transfer that into my organization, therefore we will have success, right? And that's not the case. This cut and paste mentality is not going to get you the same results because your context is different. Your environment is different. Your customers are different. You have those nuances and those subtleties in your business that are not the same as those other companies that may be out there transforming their organizations. But what you can do and what you do have in common is the ability to design from first principles. You have the ability to go in and understand that landscape for your organization uh, and to apply principles and apply these design principles as you work through what it looks like for your organization. So whenever you're looking at an example of another company, you want to start to understand those underlying principles and you can take those principles and apply them, absolutely. But the way that they manifest in your organization, the way that that comes through, the way that that plays out is going to be necessarily different because your situation is different. So we've got that that kind of, uh, I guess, disclaimer out of the way. But the so going back to the, the principles, so the, the first principle is design outside in from a customer's perspective. As I said, you're probably going to bump, bump into a bunch of frameworks and methods. Uh, you'll probably hear about the Spotify model. You'll probably hear about Scaled Agile Framework or SAFE. Uh, you know, and, and all of these models, all of these frameworks absolutely can work for you and your context potentially. Um, it's worth looking at all of those different things. But what I want to talk to you today is, is about the shift in mindset around what it, what it really looks like to look from the outside in. All of these models, we talk about cross-functional teams, we talk about bringing together skill sets from across our business, we talk about bringing in all these perspectives. It's coming from a place of inside the organization, and it's coming from a place of us designing for ourselves, as opposed to a place of understanding what our customers want and need. So let me dig into this in a little more detail, right? You go into designing an organization and and building these cross-functional teams, and this is not necessarily a bad thing, but in doing that, what's happening is you are looking to put together from your place within the organization what you think uh, can be brought to the outside. And so that's all very well and good, but as far as customers are concerned, they want something out of your organization. They have a, a challenge that they need help with, they have an opportunity they're looking to fulfill, whatever it is, they have, a, they have a thing that they're trying to do. And it doesn't matter how much tinkering you do along on the inside. What actually matters to the customer is that thing that they're after. And so, yes, absolutely, bringing together cross-functional teams, bringing together different perspectives, absolutely we're going to get better results in terms of the diversity of thought. We know that the research demonstrates that diversity in our teams and our makeup uh, and the way that we put things together, we absolutely know that diversity leads to better decisions. So we're not disputing any of that, but it's not the same as looking outside in from a customer's perspective. And that must be our ultimate goal, to start to understand what is truly impactful for our customers and design everything we do around that. So let me give you a, a quick example here. Uh, I was working with a major airline uh, a few years ago now, 
and uh, we were sitting in a room with, uh, it was the CIO, the digital lead and, and a bunch of uh, sort of senior people in, in that IT space and they had responsibility for leading a big piece of transformation within that organisation and um, and we were sort of at the end of a two day workshop and we were, we'd been talking about customer led, customer led organisation, um, there's a lot of conversation about agile, there's a lot of conversation about digital, uh, you know, we'd, we'd been through a couple of days of really intensive effort focusing on what does it look like to build teams from a customer's perspective, like what does it look like to build teams around what customers want, and uh, and I remember that particular CIO sort of jumping in and saying, well, we're going to build customer uh, we're going to build teams based on customer demand. We're going to understand what our customers uh, are after. We're going to build customer demand teams. I said, this is great. Tell me more. <laughs> and as, it, as he started to describe, he, he, he sort of said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to have one team that's focused initially on um, the way that that whole booking comes into the organization. So customers want to book. They want to, they want to get on a place. So we'll have a whole team that's focused around that that uh, gateway into, into our world and into our organization. We'll have a whole team that's focused on that whole booking process and making sure that you get select the right flights. And then uh, as they as they come through that flight process, then what's we, what we're going to do is we're going to have a team that is totally dedicated to that check-in process as the customers come through uh, into, into the airport, into the terminal, and as they're getting ready to, to check into their flights to get on that plane, we have a whole team that's dedicated to that entire process. And then... We have another team that's dedicated for that in-flight piece when you're actually up in the air traveling. Uh, and, and we'll have a whole team that's dedicated around that. And then we'll have this other team that, that captures at the back end, making sure that you get the right luggage, that you, you know, you, your luggage is there when you arrive at the end of your flight and, and sort of tying off that entire experience as the customer lands at their destination. And that'll give us customer demand-driven teams because the customers have these demands. And I remember sitting there and I said to him, well, how the F is that any different to what you're doing today? From a customer's perspective, that customer still has to come into your organization and traverse every single one of those different teams to get what it is that they want. Customers don't want to book. They don't want to pick up their baggage. Customers want to get from Melbourne to Sydney on a commuter flight or from you know Auckland to Wellington. Or on a commuter flight and they want to they want to be able to get there get to their destination get back that that's the entirety of the customer's experience and um and 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 i said so so how is this you know at the moment we've got functional teams right we've got a finance team we've got an hr team we've got a, an it team and they come together and they they piece together that customer experience of that flight from you know auckland to the LA for a, for a family tour, right? Like they, we piece together that entire customer experience, but the customer has to traverse all of those different functional business units to actually get what they want, whether they're aware of it or not. What you're doing is, is we're now building team. You still have to traverse multiple teams to get what it is that you want. So how is this customer demand led? And the team sort of sat and, and, and paused for a minute and I said, True customer demand-led teams would look something more like, hey, we're a family that's going to Disneyland for a holiday. And we 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 have someone that is involved from the booking process, through the check-in process, through the flight process, all the way to our destination. And, and, they, and this team has knowledge about what it means to take a family on holiday. We have another commuter flight between... Brussels and London, and and we have a team that's dedicated to understanding that corporate commuter and what needs to happen to be able to get that person from A to B and Wi-Fi and meetings and all of that jazz, and, and a, a, a team that's built around that corporate customer and their particular demand. And this team was just kind of flawed, and they said, but that, could, that can never work. There's no way we could do that. And I said, aha, so let's be really honest with ourselves. Building a better functional teams is not doing this from a customer's perspective. We're not doing this for the customer. The reason that we're building these better functional teams and the, and the reason that we're putting them together in a way that's more closely aligned with roughly what the customer wants is not because it's good for the customer. 
It's because we're acknowledging our inability to build a team that services customer demand. And so in the absence of being able to do that, we're doing the best that we can, and we think that that looks like better functional business units. But make no mistake, this is not for our customers. This is for ourselves and our own lack of ability to service the demand end-to-end -end from a customer's perspective. And I remember there's this moment where I sort of looked across at some of my colleagues and the, the look said, we're either going to have work for the next many years or we're out tomorrow, like <laughs> it's one or the other. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes you've got to have those real conversations because there is nothing wrong with building better functional teams because we can't service the demand end to end as a stepping stone to get closer to building outside in from a customer perspective. There is nothing wrong with that. But let's be really clear about why we're doing it. We're not doing this for our customers. We're doing it for ourselves because we have an inability to build end-to-end -end from a customer's perspective. And that's a hard truth to face up to. But when we do, what it means is that it leaves that space open to acknowledge that, hey, we've got this lofty goal. It may be entirely unachievable. We have this lofty goal. This is what we're working towards. And at the moment, this is our best approximation of a design for our organization that gets us closer to that lofty goal, or it's our best approximation of our understanding of that design and of those design principles. And this is what it looks like, but it leaves the door open to learn. If we're to do those types of changes and say, we're doing this for a customer's perspective, you've shut down the door for opportunity to change and grow in the future. You've shut down that you, you then have to get over that hurdle of, hey, we've learned something new about customers and therefore we're evolving. And we're just kidding ourselves. So this first principle about design outside in from a customer's perspective, really, really critical that we're honest with ourselves. It's like, don't get me wrong, this stuff is hard and it's totally okay to choose a step around that, that enables us to progress rather than trying to get it perfect first time. But we want to be really, really honest with ourselves about what we're doing, why we're doing it, and leaving those doors open to continue to evolve, uh, to continue to grow as we, as we move forward. So uh, that's it from me today. I hope that was helpful. Um, a little bit challenging, potentially. Hit me up with a comment or an email. Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And wherever you are in the world today, I hope you're having an awesome, awesome day. It's actually super freezing outside in Glenorchy today. So um, whilst it's beautiful and sunny, I'm probably going to be spending a lot of time inside. But I hope wherever you are, you get a chance to get out and see some sunshine and, uh, and have a great week. I will see you again uh, very, very shortly. Thanks for your time.